Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to those in YouTube land. My name is J.R. Stewart. Some of you may know me already as the conservative voice of Black America. I also uh, co-host the uh, Black Meek show with uh, Tommy Duncan uh, once a week. But this is a uh, solo recording. And I think I'm going to try to do it every Saturday night. Coming here down, coming down to the dungeon where I can think. And so today is going to be an interesting topic. We're going to talk about my favorite topic, of course you guys know, the uh, white liberal socialist progressive Democrat and the black minion sycophants who follow them. The uh, such as the Congressional Black Sellout Caucus, you know, led by Maxine Waters and Elijah Cummins and Al Green, you know, those folks, um, other black leaders, black pastors, black community leaders, supposedly. In fact, I, I get tired of even hearing the term leader. What, what are they leading? What exactly are they leading? And if they're leading, do we really want to end up where they're taking us? So let's get started. Um, I'm going to go back to Baltimore yet again. And the videotape that I saw of the mayor of Baltimore walking through the black areas with her hand over her face because she said the stench was too much for her to bear. And there's trash everywhere in this video, everywhere. And rotten buildings and more trash and, and rats and, and animal human feces and waste. And, and, if, and if she's having a hard time breathing in this area, imagine what the kids who live in that area have to go through. And the adults, the teenagers. You know, she, she's, why haven't our people... Last time I checked, Baltimore is a black city for the most part, run by blacks, black city council. Why is it you folks can't do simple shit? Simple. You can't have the sanitation department run through, clean up one block at a time, just, just, just one. Start with one block, one corner, one intersection, and say, hey, you know what, we're going to clean this up. Next weekend, we'll be back, we'll clean up another intersection. We'll clean up another block, another street, another section. For the houses that need to be torn down, start tearing them down. What's the delay? Can, can you tear down maybe one house a month, one a week? Can you do anything? And, and I remember when our president, Donald J. Trump, called Baltimore a rat infested city. And then it wasn't long after that that the Republicans had their leadership meeting in Baltimore. And the president came back and said, wait a minute. Maybe Baltimore is not as dirty and filthy and nasty as I originally proclaimed. In fact, he said the city was quite nice. Air was breathable. The surroundings were nice. See, see, see the problem is that the president was in the white area of town where they keep things orderly, keep things neat. You know, he, he probably wasn't that far from where Elijah Cummins and other uh, uh, minion sycophant sell out black folks live. They don't live down in the hood. And, I, and see, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm trying to encourage my people to free themselves. You are not going to be free doing the same things you've been doing year after year, voting for white liberal, socialist, progressive Democrats, that skanky party, and all the people who follow them, the Elijah Cummins of the world, the Maxine Waters of the world, the Al Green, that whole, that whole pit of, of sorry losers that we call the Congressional Black Sellout Caucus. Not one of them's worth a quarter. I mean, you couldn't pay me to vote for one of them knuckleheads. I mean, so somehow they find a way to enrich themselves. You know, they, they live in nice homes. They go to Washington, barely middle class, and they come out rich. 
but then the constituents are still catching hell. You, black folks, still catching hell. And somehow all they have to do is use the word, that magic word, I'm going to give it to you, the sacred R word, racism. Oh, man, there's nothing like racism to stir up black people. All they have to do is say, hey, those Republicans over there are racist. That's why you catch in hell. That's why your streets are nasty. That's why your schools are pitiful. Well, those Republicans don't want to pay their fair share. Oh, man, they, they, they keep cutting taxes for rich people. Not for you. And, and they give breaks to, to everybody who's rich and don't care nothing about you. They're racist. That's all, it, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. You know, Lyndon Baines Johnson, when he ran against Goldwater, threw out the race, racism card. He didn't know. He had no clue whether it was going to work or not. He didn't. He just thought it was a desperation move. But guess what? It worked. And the Democratic Party, who's been so horrible to black people. Before I'm going to come back to Lyndon Bain Johnson. So let's go back in history. I, have to, I want to start each speech off the same way, talking about how skank that party is. The Democratic Party is the party of slavery, the party of the KKK. In fact, they found it in front of the KKK. If you go back and you read, it's like, oh, well, Jim, how do you know this? Because... I read things that people who were living during that age wrote. This is in the congressional record, believe it or not. Go back and look what happened in Opelousa, Louisiana, back around 1870. Look how the uh, uh, how Republicans passed the Anti-KKK Act 1, 2, and 3, signed into law by President Grant, I believe. Read the details. This is in the congressional record. Just go back and read it. Research it. You'll find it just like I found it. it. Won't take you long. And then read through with the investigators. And what started all of this? The clans went down to Opelousas and killed about 200 black people who dared to simply go and vote and vote for a Republican. Exercising their right to vote. Slaughtered. And, and it was so egregious that the government felt compelled. They had to do something. They had to look into this. When they looked into it, here's what they found. That the KKK was the military wing of the Democratic Party. That's what they found. They, they were there at that time. They investigated it. This was their, this was their finding. But let's move on. This is also the party of the slave codes, the black laws, the pig codes, and Jim Crow laws. This is also the party, a separate but equal, brought to us by hmm, the father of the progressive movement. You guys, come on, you know who it is. Come on, I'm listening. Okay, if you don't know Woodrow Wilson, do black people in the voting for him. And then, boy, when he got into office, him and his brother turned their backs on black people. Not just turned their backs on them, fired tens of thousands of blacks out of the government who had worked their way into management. Can't have none of you niggas in my government. Fired them. Then demoted thousands more. All the success that black people have made during the... See, black folks don't even know this because they don't teach you this in the history books. But it's not hidden. Oh, no. If you, if you go crack a book open for yourself, get out of the uh, classroom where you have some white liberal teaching you and feeding your head with garbage... Then you can actually find out the truth. But let's keep let's keep on going. This is the same party that didn't want blacks to vote. They didn't want blacks to learn anything. They burned down schools. <clears throat> Look at all the schools named after white Republicans. Morehouse. Hmm? Clark. Spellman. It's a really it's a really it's a really nice school. There are many more. How many where are the schools named after Hmm. rich Democrats that were set up for black people. Now, you can email me on your list if you ever put one together. I'm waiting. Um, so let's keep continuing to move forward. They destroyed your schools. Look what they did to Paul Dunbar High School and many other black high schools, black schools around the, the turn of the century. These were schools that were competing with their white counterparts. 
and some were excelling and, and were out competing their white counterparts. Except the white liberal, socialist, progressive Democrat couldn't bear for that to happen, couldn't stand it, had to go do something about it. The assumption was these Negroes are cheating down there. We have to go, we really have to go look at this and figure out what's going on. And when they realized that they were not cheating, that the black kids were actually outperforming the white counterparts. Yeah, we have to get in here and take care of this. Cause we can't have that. No, 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 no. Had to destroy the black schools from the inside out. Hmm. What about the black economics? There's this place called Black Wall Street in Tulsa, I mean, in Oklahoma, outside of uh, Tulsa, I believe. Whatever happened to that, that area? Hmm. Destroyed. Bombed. Burned. By whom? Hmm? White liberals, socialist, progressive Democrats. Why? Oh, because, you know, those Negroes are being uppity. You know, they we couldn't crush them. We couldn't control them. We cut off bus service. They created their own buses. They had their own shops and restaurants and banks. They were doing well. and we, we, There was nothing we could do. We couldn't hold anything over their head. We stopped sending doctors to treat them. Well, these, these uppity Negroes had the nerve to start a medical school and start producing their own doctors and nurses. Everything we did to crush them didn't work. So we had to bomb and burn the place down. Jimmy, you, Jerry, are you understanding? Don't you understand? We had no choice. These Negroes were being uppity. They were getting out of place. We had to restore the right, the rightful order of things. And even when they rebuilt, and then mind you, had to rebuild without the help of insurance that they had been paying for. When their properties were when that, that whole little city was bombed, insurance companies wouldn't honor any of the claims. They claim, you gotta know, listen to this, this is good. They claim all these black people, all these businesses, restaurants, banks, shops, that they all burnt their, 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 their own businesses down. They, they, they burnt their own properties down. So since you burnt it down yourself, hmm, yeah, we can't honor a claim when you when you self-inflicted this. Everybody just woke up one day and decided to burn their properties down. I mean, that's, that's the story they want you to believe. So after they, they got rid of the, the economic template blueprint, destroyed the schools. Oh, they couldn't stop there. Because up until 1960, most black kids, over 90%, grew up in a home with a mother and a father. Oh, well, you know, JR, you know, we can't allow that to happen. To continue? No, no, no. Those daddies in the home, that's bad. So they went about to destroy the family, get rid of the fathers. And they succeeded. In the 60s, when the um, the fatherless rate in homes was about maybe 25% for black kids, in homes that didn't have a father, oh, gee, we can, we can do better than that. Oh, we're going to show you. What, what are we up to now? 75% now? This is your white liberal socialist progressive Democrats at work. They hired thousands of social workers all across America. They sent them into the homes to make sure the black woman did not have a black man if she was on public, any kind of public assistance. Housing, food, it didn't even matter. And in addition to that, go read uh, a Supreme Court case. I think it's King versus Alabama. That gives more details into how that social system worked. It wasn't just that they didn't want a black man in the house. You couldn't even have sex with a black man. Really? You think, I'm, you think I'm making this up, but I'm not. Read it. If a black woman, they, call, they, they found out that a black woman was having sex with a black man, the state would go after the black man for child support. And it didn't matter that those were not his kids. She could have just started dating this guy a week ago, decided to take him home. Spend a night. You know, maybe, I don't know, maybe not a week, maybe a few months, who, 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 whatever the number is. She started dating someone, and the state found out, the social worker found out that she was having relations. Then they would go after the man. Say, hey, this is the woman that you're sleeping with. She has four kids. Guess what? 
they're not your four kids and your responsibility, and we're going to come after you. Of course, now with that going on, what, what are the chances that the black woman now is going to be able to find a man and have a relationship that somehow evolves into marriage? Slim and none. That pretty much, that was a dagger that pretty much did it. And now we're still dealing with the fallout of all of that mess. And guess what? The white liberal socialist progressive Democrat has no regrets about what they've done, their policies. In fact, they want to double down on it. They want to continue the mayhem and the destruction. We see that young boys who grew up in a home without a father are several times more likely to end up in jail or prison. We see young girls who grew up in a home without a father several times more likely to end up poor with children they can't afford, multiple daddies. And, and instead of saying, hmm, you know what, we were well-intentioned, but obviously some of these policies are not working. Maybe, just maybe, we need to make some changes. No, no changes. We're doubling down on, on the destruction. And they continue. And, and so they allow a few of the, the ones who follow orders. Yeah, monster. Yeah, uh, you destroy the black family. No problem, monster. That's what you want. Those are your black politicians. Those are your black leaders. Social leaders. Civic leaders. Community leaders. Pastors. Bishops. All of them you know, playing the game. I was listening to this um, revolt summit on on YouTube. My daughter sent me a link to it. Dad, you got to watch this. This is good stuff. 